Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own app like Spotify. So Spotify is a huge company that makes billions of dollars every year. Now, I really don't like Spotify personally because of the CEO and the decisions that they make by not paying artists who don't make a certain amount of plays per month. There's a lot of other stuff that they do that's not helping the artists as much as they could be and not paying them fairly. Anyways, that aside, I'm gonna show you guys how you can build your own Spotify and you could change all of that around. You could pay artists more, you could pay them however you want. So let's get right into it. I'm just gonna open up the terminal, which I'm using Ubuntu on Windows with the WSL setup. So if you don't know about that, uh, you can look it up and I'll probably make a video about this soon. But all it means is we have this nice terminal setup and we have Rails installed. We can check that by running Rails-V and it should return your Rails number, which should be also higher than seven. So I'm coding this on Rails 7.1, but if you're on Rails 7 or any of the different versions, it should work. So from here, I'm gonna create the new app by typing in Rails new. And I'm just gonna call this Spotify-Rails and I'm gonna pass in a few options. Like I'm gonna set the database to PostgreSQL because that's just the one that I'm most familiar with. There's a few different databases you can choose from, but for beginners, most people recommend PostgreSQL. So you might wanna work with that. And then also for the CSS framework for styling everything, I'm gonna use Tailwind CSS because I'm also just really comfortable with Tailwind. And you can do that with the dash C option. So this is all we're gonna need for right now. We can just press enter and it'll generate this app for us. Okay, now that our app has finished generating, we can CD into the app, Spotify Rails, and then I can just start the server by typing bin slash dev, which will start the server on localhost 3000. And we can go and view that by opening up the browser and heading over to localhost colon 3000 in the URL. Now we see this first uh, screen, which you always see, if, which means we have to create the database. So I could have done that from the terminal, but I'll just do it with the button on the page. And now that we got past that, we see the Rails logo, which means our app is running, but we don't have anything inside of our app yet. So let's go ahead and just add a simple home page. I think we could start with that. So to add a home page, I'm just gonna go back in the terminal, stop the server for a second, and then I'm gonna do a Rails generator for controller. And I'm gonna create a home controller with an index action. And I'll just press enter. And now I'm gonna have to set the root. So the root of the application is whatever gets shown on the base URL. So like localhost 3000 by itself with no different routes would be the root. And we need to set that to our home index action. So to do that, I'm gonna first open up our code in the code editor, which I use VS Code. This is very helpful. And I've, I've become really familiar with it recently. All right, so inside of VS Code, let's see if I can zoom in. Let's go over to the config folder in the routes.rb. Now you'll see up at the top, we have this get for the home slash index. Now we can convert this to the root, which you can see an example down at the bottom. All we have to do is just replace get with root and then replace the slash with a pound sign like this. So it's rooting to the controller and then the pound sign just means which action it's gonna go to. Now, if we went and reloaded localhost 3000, if we went and reload the browser, oh, actually, we forgot to restart the server. We have to do bin slash dev again. Okay, now we should be able to reload. And you see that we're on the home index action. So this is sweet. We have a simple home page. I'm just gonna go in and style that like very quickly. So to do that, we can go into app views, home index. Now this is our home page. So obviously down the road, you want to have like a more, you know, bulky landing page. Let's look at Spotify and see what they have for their landing page. But I don't even know if they have a landing page. Maybe if you're not signed in. I think I am signed in. Yeah, their, their page kind of just looks like they just show you the app. So there's not really a landing page per se, and that's fine. But for ours, let's just say that we do want to have our own landing page. So I'll put the title Spotify 
rails. And obviously, your app, you wouldn't want to call it anything like Spotify because they might try to sue you. So the new best music streaming platform that pays fairly. Because that's what my app is going to be. All right, cool. And then I might want to like change the background of the page, center everything. But you'll notice there's this little bit of margin that gets added. So that's because I'm using the Tailwind uh, preset with Rails, which adds this thing to the Layouts application. So in a Rails app, you always have this Layouts folder, and then you have different layouts. So each one of these files is a layout. The application layout always gets rendered for each uh, different view, unless you specify a different layout. So what's happening is inside of our application file, there's this main class that's adding like a container margin, all of this margin top. So I usually just, I'll either work with it or I'll just delete it. In this case, I'm going to delete it because I want to totally override the styling for this app. So now we just have a body with a yield. This is what it should look like for your Rails app if you don't want to have any styling on the body. So now what happens when I reload, all of our stuff gets pushed up in the corner, which that's fine because we can style it now better on the page. So what I'm going to do on the page is I'm going to add a class with full. And I can do a min height screen, which will mean that this div, the minimum it can be is the height of the whole screen. And you, that means you can add a background on this. So if I just do like BG pink 500, you'll see that the whole page should be pink now. As you can see, and now if we want to center this text into the center, it's very easy. We could either do text center on these, or we could add like a flex, flex call item center which would stack our items and center it in the middle. You'll see that both of the texts get like centered and now we can add some padding or margin. I'll just do padding top on the div, which should push these inner elements down a little bit. Now I know Tailwind can be confusing at first if you're not like completely comfortable with Tailwind CSS, but you can use any library. I just want to tell you guys, you can use any CSS library. I use Tailwind because I don't know, I just feel comfortable with it. There's so much you can do with it too. All right, so I don't really like the pink. I'm gonna switch that out for a gradient. So let's do a gradient from the top to the bottom. You can do that by saying BG gradient to B from, let's do like indigo 700 to purple 300. So it's gonna be like a dark blue all the way to a light purple. I think I've used this color scheme a lot. You know, it's a little bit too familiar. How about from blue 800? So instead of indigo, we're just going to do blue. All right, that's cool. And then for the title, so like this H1 for Spotify Rails, I could change the color on that. Do like a text blue 200. Oh yeah, that looks cool. And then the text beneath it could be a little bit larger and also have some cool coloring on it. The new best streaming platform that pays fairly. Oh, and another fun thing, what if we did a gradient through this? Now I haven't really got comfortable with like rainbow gradients. That's what I was trying to do. It seems with Tailwind, they only have like up to three colors that you can put in. But there's always the, you know, you can always learn new things. So for me, I'm gonna learn something right now. I'm gonna look up if there's a rainbow gradient. So see, usually they just have like the from, the ending, and the middle color. But I would love to do, oh, wait, they do. From 10%, from 30%. Oh, so you can choose like the different spot. Well, what if I want a bunch of different colors? See, they don't really have like a good solution for that. Some guy asked, is it possible to make a rainbow gradient? Oh, could you do multiple via? I guess it says you can do multiple vias if you use the percentage. So let's see if we can do that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add a gradient as the color of the text. So first of all, you have to think about how do you add a background color as the color of the text. And to do that, you can use a property called bg clip text. Oops. 
And then I can make the text transparent. So right now you're not going to see anything. It's just going to disappear. But then if you add a background color, EG purple 500, we would now be able to see that purple coming through. So I'm going to be adding a gradient. I'm going to do EG gradient to right. And we'll go from pink 500. And then I was going to try out the vias. So via uh, red 500 and then via dash 10% and then two yellow 500. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, right now it just looks like kind of crazy, but let's see if I can add more vias. So via red, via red 500, via 10%. How about via blue 500, via 20%. This is going to be like a huge list of gradients. Now, I can't even, I can't tell if it's working. Green 500, 30%. I just feel like we're overriding like the, the one before it. Yeah, I don't think this works. Like, it, I don't see the red or the blue. All right, so yeah, this probably doesn't work. Yeah, because look, it still looks the same. But you know what? Even like this, this looks pretty cool to me. So I might just leave it like this. Even though we couldn't get the full rainbow, we're still able to get a few colors. All right, so the new best music streaming platform that pays fairly. And then we might even want to have like some images down below that just show off like how awesome of a place it is. So to find free images to use in your Rails apps or any apps, you can go to unsplash.com. I've been going there ever since I learned coding. It's just been around and you can look up anything. Like I'll look up music. You can right off the bat find a bunch of pictures of musicians that you can use. We get like this guy with his uh, violin. And then to add it into our app, I'll put it inside of the app assets in the images folder, which is already set up in the Rails app. What we could do is we can just take our image, drag it over into the images folder, and I'll rename it violin. And we can render this on the page with a simple image tag. Although I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a, a grid at the bottom. So I can have three different images down at the bottom if I wanted to. I'll do a grid, grid calls three, gap eight. And I think I can also say justify self end if I want to make sure like this element gets shoved all the way at the bottom. And then inside of there, I'll do an image tag for the violin. JPEG. And I could do a fixed height on this. Height 96 with full object cover, something like that. And if I go and reload, well, this is what shows up. All right, so it's not really what I had in mind, but it's getting there and it's because I didn't specify any width on this div. So I actually want to do like a max width, 5XL with full MX auto. Which I mean, it'll take up a little bit more space and it'll push itself away from the sides. And obviously the justify self end didn't work. So instead we could just do a margin top of like some number to push it down from the text. So yeah, something like this. And then we could grab more pictures and put it in that grid and that might look kind of cool. So we can grab a DJ and I do want to get someone singing. There was like that one kid. I guess we can look it up. Sing. How about this one? Oh, but it's locked. So you can tell if it's locked, if there's like a lock icon, it means you need to subscribe. But we could get this one. I'm just going to download it. All right. And then I'm going to drag these new images in. So we got the DJ. So I'm just going to rename that to DJ. And let's drop the image tag in. So I'll just copy the violin one. Do a second one, then change the name to DJ. And if we reload, now we get something like this. So we have our two images. And then for the last one, we had uh, the lady. lady who is playing a piano on the bed. 
So if I reload, sweet, this is what our platform is looking like. The new blessed music streaming platform that pays fairly. Let me add some margin on that subtitle. And then I'm thinking it might be fun to add like a play button right here, right in the center. So it just lets you know what it's all about. We can add our icon for a play button. I always get my icons from flaticon.com because it has a ton of free options. Now I'm going to look up play button and find one that looks good for our app. So really any of them could work. I'm going to get this one with the outline. And I'm going to bring it over into the app. And I want to try to display it right on top of those images. Do image tag play.png. We're actually going to need to put this in the middle somehow. So, you know how I have the margin top 36? Maybe I'll do a height 36 on a div. And then I'll put the play button right inside of it. And this would act as a margin but also allow us to put like an image that we want. Oh, and just like that, it already kind of sh shows up how I was expecting it. So that looks cool. It's a play button right in the middle. It's a bit large. So we add a class on this, maybe do like some padding. Hold up. That didn't really seem to change it that much. I can just do a width and then object cover a little bit of a smaller width. All right, that looks good. And then on the div itself, I could center the item by doing a flex item center and justify center. And there it gets put right in the middle of the screen. So this is cool and all. And then when I want to actually like, I think it'd be cool if you could hover on it and change the backgrounds of this image. So I want to see if I can do that. Let's try to add a hover state and then add like a background color. Let's do EG pink or something. All right. So look, when you hover, it actually does fill the background. The only thing is that it kind of overflows the icon and you can see that there's also some color outside of the edges, but we should be able to fix that by adding rounded full overflow hidden. And because the play button's all like already a circle, yeah, look at that. It works perfectly. So you can hover and fill the inside of the icon. It looks pretty good. Anyways, I was kind of thinking this would be fun to like have as the maybe like the sign up link would be you click on the play button or something like that. But this looks good. From here, we need to add in a few different things. So we could decide what we want to work on first. Uh, we're probably going to have user accounts. So those are the users who are going to sign up and have to pay a subscription to access the platform. And then you also have artist accounts where the artist could go and like release their music and upload music. So I don't know who I want to work on first uh, for the accounts, but we're going to need a library for user accounts. And for me, I usually just use Devise. All right, guys, let's add in the user accounts now. So I'm going to do that by going to console and I'm going to add the device gem by doing a bundle add device. And then from there, we can install device by running rails g device colon install command, which will set up a few things we need in our app. From there, they ask you to have a root and to also add alerts in. So we haven't set any alerts in our app, but we can do that very easily. By going to the layouts folder inside of this application file and usually I just render a partial with the alerts so you can do that just by doing adding a render layout slash alerts and this would get rendered on top of the page content on each page so now we just have to create a partial inside the layouts folder called underscore alerts and we can drop this bit of content in here 
So now whenever we have an error in our app, it'll just show up at the top of the page or an alert, or not, or not really error, but an alert from the back end or a notice. So the next thing that they say you can do is you can generate the device views if you want to customize them. But I actually created a gem that does this for Tailwind. So we can get that by, add, by doing a bundle add Tailwind underscore device. And then run Rails G Tailwind device colon views. And just like that, we get the views generated and they'll all be styled with Tailwind. So they'll look nice right off the bat. From here, we can generate the model. So to generate a model, you do Rails G device and it will put the name of the model. So we're going to end up having two models. We're going to have a regular user model, or we might even call it like a listener. I think I'll just call it users. But we'll also have an artist model. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to create a model with device called artist. And it probably will have more attributes. But for right now, we can just run this command. And then we can add the migrations to ha add like different attributes in a second. So I'm going to run this. It generates the model and it'll also add in like the routes for signing in as an artist and all that stuff. So we can just do a Rails DB migrate, migrate the database, and just like that, we have artist accounts in our app. So now I can restart the server with bin slash dev. Let's go ahead and reload. And if we go up in the URL and go over to artist slash sign in, you'll see that we get on this sign in page. So we can log in as an artist or you can create a new account. So obviously the styling is a little bit off because we have to add some padding to the top. So to style this even more, we can go inside of our app and go over to the views. We now have this device folder and inside of it, we have all the different pages that we might use in the sign in process. So we have the sessions new. That's where the sign in page is. And I'm just going to add some padding top to this sign in page, just like that. And also for the registrations page, there we go. Now we have the login and there's also like this, this page is kind of doesn't really match with the whole design of our app either. So on the sessions page, if we wanted to style it a bit more, why don't we use like the same gradient we have on the home page? So I'll come back here. I'll copy this gradient and then I'll put that on the sessions new page. And boom. Oh yeah. Now we have a nice background color on our login page and we could even go farther and add like a title. How about instead of just saying login, we could say login as, and then print out the resource name, which is a variable we have access to in this partial with device. So yeah, now it'll say login as artist. And then eventually we could style this page even more. But for right now, this is probably good. And if we want to do the same thing on the sign up page, I'm going to copy that gradient. Go over to registrations new, put in the gradient and then also do the sign up as and put the resource name. Because I feel like that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, so this looks good. Sign up as an artist. We can put on our email. Artist one. Put in a password. And just like that, you are now signed in as an artist. So as an artist, I would probably not even show you the homepage anymore. I would just bring you over to like your dashboard. We can go ahead and add in the dashboard. I'm gonna do this by going over to the routes and I'm just gonna create a resource. I'll go underneath root. I'll add a resource dashboard. And this is gonna go to artist controller dashboard. So we're going to have to create this artist controller and then a dashboard action. So we can do that by going into the controllers folder, create a new file called artist underscore controller to RB. And inside of here, we're going to have to create the class artist controller. So I had an E in there and then it inherits from application controller. And then we're just going to define a dashboard method. So def dashboard, just like this. Now this is always going to need a matching view. All right. So every controller actually needs to have a view. So I'm going to go and create the views now for the artists 
and the dashboard action. So to do that, I'll go into the views folder, create a new folder called artists. So this is to match with the controller name and I'll create the template, which will be dashboard.html.erb. And this is what will be rendered when you go to the dashboard route. For right now, I think I'm gonna add, I'm gonna copy this div from the homepage, like the gradient and everything and the padding. And inside of it, I'll render H1. And just say like, welcome to your dashboard. This is, what, this is what should show up on the dashboard. Now to actually get to that dashboard route, I think we can just do slash dashboard in the URL. And as you can see, it says, welcome to your dashboard. But if we wanted to override the root path, which is like the path that would show just for like without any URLs, without any additional things, then if we want to do that, we can set the root based on what user is signed in. So the way that you can do this is there's a helper in device actually that allows you to have a method in the routes to RB. So we can go right underneath the root. I think actually I might do like, I usually go before the root. I don't think it really affects anything. You can say authenticated, authenticated, and then you put the name of the model. So for us, it's artists do. And then inside of that, you can set different, I guess, routes that would apply to only the authenticated account. So we could say the root is now the artist and the dashboard action. Just like this. And I think also I want to move the, the root all the way down to the bottom. I don't really know if it affects anything, but just in case, like, maybe you have to define one of the routes before you can use it down here. We can make sure that that's working. Although I don't think that matters. But as you can see, we have an authenticated artist. We're going to route them to the dashboard. So let's see if it works by just reloading. Right off the bat, we get invalid root name. It's already in use. Right, so I think it's because we need to set a name, like a custom name for our root. We can say as authenticated artist root. And if we reload, yep, now it works. So on localhost 3000, we're seeing the dashboard page when you're signed in as artist. This is really exciting, guys. So we now have an artist dashboard right here on this dashboard page. This is pretty exciting, honestly. And from here, we can have, like, the first thing we can do is just have a form where they can upload new songs. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna need a model for the song, of course. Just everything in Rails, you need to create a model. I'll probably actually scaffold this so it'll create the form page and the routes and everything. So we just have to, we won't have to do very much for the songs. So I'm gonna create that model right now by doing a Rails G model. And I'm gonna put the name of song. We're gonna give it a title. And eventually we might wanna have stuff like genres and like other attributes, but for right now we can just do a song. Oh, we could do an image. We could we type attachment because we're going to use Active Storage to store these, like the files, and then we're also going to have an audio file, which will also be a type attachment. And the last thing is artist belongs to, because all of the songs are going to belong to an artist, and I think that looks good to me. Let's just run. And then we're going to migrate the database to apply this new table. So now we have our songs table. This is awesome. Oh, and actually, I just realized that I did a I did a model generator instead of a scaffold. So I'm just gonna roll back, and then I'm gonna go do Rails D on the model so I can remove it, and then rerun it but as a scaffold so it creates the views as well. There we go. And now I'm going to migrate the database. So the difference really is that with the scaffold, it creates all of those views. So you don't have to make them yourself or 
like the form and all of that stuff. A scaffold is really kind of helpful in these situations. So I'm going to restart the server and we can just simply put the link right here on the dashboard to post a song and it's going to go to the new songs path. It's as simple as that and then I can style it a little bit more and padding some rounded Just try to bring this whole thing together. Oh, it looks like new songs path is not. Is that not a, a path yet? Maybe it's new song, like a singular. Yeah, I think that's what was it. Oh, I'm going to add like a little bit of break between these. Because it looks like the button was kind of interfering with the text on the title. All right, so cool. Now we have this <laughs> very obvious centered button to post the song. So I'm going to click it. And just like that, we get redirected over to this songs page and we can see where that is over in our views. We have this new songs folder. So this is all what was generated by the scaffold. The scaffolds are pretty intense, but they're pretty helpful too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the new and I kind of want to add like the background here. Although I keep adding the background in all these places guys. And I really could have just added this in the application. So I think I'm going to take back the, the background in a lot of these places real quick. Although you could leave it, it really wouldn't affect anything. So I'm just going to scoot that out and I'm going to move it into the layouts application. And I'll just put it right on the body, that gradient backgrounds. And now it would apply to everything. The only thing is we have like a weird situation like this where I think I also had the background on here. No, I didn't. Let's just add a min height screen. I don't know why there's that glitch in the UI. But if we do a min height screen, it seems to resolve that. And we could do a padding top just to push our content down. And. Also, this form does seem kind of weird, like the file fields, since they're transparent, it looks kind of like abrupt compared to the text fields. We might want to think about how we could style this a little bit nicer. All right, so we already have this landing page, and then we also have the artist accounts. You can sign in as an artist, and then you'll see the dashboard. This is awesome. We already have a pretty good start to the app. Now, real quickly, I think I'm just going to add a link to sign up as an artist to the bottom of our homepage real quick. Just so it'll be easier to get over to that route. So to do that, I'll go back in the code and go to the home index file. And I can just go to the bottom of this div outside of the grid div. And I'll put in my link. It's going to be, it's going to say sign, yeah, like sign up as an artist and this would go to new user registrations path I think it's just like that and I'm gonna add some styling just like a text Excel and I'll make the text lighter let's see what that looks like so actually I guess that wasn't the right URL oh not new user it's actually new artist we haven't even added in users yet looks like that's still not the right path maybe it's like a singular registration yeah I think that was it and as you can see there's a link down at the bottom now I kind of want to add some space or like add a VR I have this link which will allow us to easily click here to sign up as an artist now I had before I had signed up as an account but I took a little break, so now I have to, I don't really remember that sign in. So I'm just gonna do a new one. There we go, so I signed up as an artist. And now I have the option to post my song. So this is where we were last were with this form for the song. So this is cool. Now one thing is this artist field down here, we wouldn't need because we already have the artist that signed in. So I'm going to go in the code, head over to the 
thongs folder and then the form. And I'm just going to remove this field for the artist ID. Alright, and then I'm also going to go and edit the controller. So the songs controller. All of this was generated by a scaffold. And scaffolds are cool and helpful, but uh, I want to adjust this for my needs in this app. So for example, on the songs controller, set song should actually be, instead of just finding songs globally, it should be scoped from the current artist. So current artist.songs.find. And this is just a helper from device because we have that artist model. And another thing we can do is we can actually add a before action, authenticate artist. So before you can even go to any of these song routes, like the new page or just even the index, you're going to have to sign in. And then I guess, again, on the index, we're just going to list all of the users. So current artists, songs all. We can always adjust this later. I think maybe on create instead of song.new, let's do current artist dot songs new. Now that'll set up the correct associations when you're creating a song. But I think with the song model, I might have not set up the association on the artist model yet between it. So if we go over to the models folder and the song model, you can see that it belongs to an artist and the artist model. This is just a class that was generated by device and we haven't added the association of songs yet. So let's just go right underneath this device code. We can add our association. So we can do that by saying has many songs. Because the artist is always going to have many songs. <clears throat> and that'll fix the associations there. So now we should be able to create our first song. So luckily, I'm actually a musical artist, so I do have a bunch of songs that I can use. And I'll just use one that I've made recently. Uh, I just have a bunch of different songs, so I can just pick one of these, drop the audio file. And then for image, you always need some sort of like visual. I can just take one of these pictures of a city. And I'll just call it like, whatever, beacons to create the song. Oh, and now we get this error on the find table. Uh, because I never did the installer for active storage. I kind of meant to do that before, but this is a good time to do it. So we can run in the terminal Rails active storage pulling install. And this will generate the migration for active storage. Then you can just migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. And then we can restart the server. And yeah, now it'll work this time. So just have to redrop in the things like the image and the audio. Alright, I'm gonna create the song. And just like that, the song was created. So this is what the show page would look like to view the song. Now I'm gonna go over there and edit that a little bit. Because I see this weird styling glitch where like the gradient is kind of messed up. So I'm going to go into the views and the songs folder and then the show page. And right here on this top level div, I'm going to add a min height screen. So at least it'll take up like the full amount of the page. And then we can also add padding if we would like to push some of that content down. There we go. So a little bit of padding. And I honestly think that this URL is not something that we're going to use for the songs like the regular for the listeners this will probably only be available for the artist and we can work on setting that up oh and i guess on the songs index there's a little typo where i did current artist i meant to say i think i just meant to say current artist of songs that should pull up all of the songs there we go and then just list it out we can also do a little bit of styling here and eventually we're going to just style this to make it look like more like the other app. All right, so as a artist, what I was saying is we might not want this song's URL to show up for everybody, right? Only an artist 
And then this would be used just to list your songs that you've released on the platform. And obviously we'd clean up the styling. Like right now, uh, it's looking pretty bad. But there's some things we could do to fix this up right away. Like adding one of these uh, widths like we had on the other pages. Like an MX Auto. And then at least we're kind of moving the stuff away from the edges. And then we could add some padding as well. Just like that. And now it's looking a little bit nicer, but obviously I don't really like this list style. I would rather do something like a card to display this since we do have an image and we have an audio file. But I think I might want to start working on the user, like the listening part of the app for right now. We can do a few more things for the artist. And then we'll get back to this dashboard like later on in the video. So maybe on the dashboard page, we can go back to that artist folder in the dashboard template. And I can add another link next to post song. I can just be like new your songs. And this will just go to songs path. It could have similar styling from the other link for posting song. But I might just change from purple to something like blue. And reload. This is what it looks like. Uh, we could probably add another BR between these links. Now, obviously, this isn't the final styling. This is pretty bad for right now, but I just want something that we can see for our artist dashboard. So we can post new songs. We can also view all of our songs. And there's not really a way to get back to the dashboard from the songs path. Unless you like edit your URL. Or we'll probably add in a nav bar, which will make navigating around the site a lot easier. And this dashboard will become like a lot better once we start adding in all the different features for the app and start adding like analytics and like showing you how much you earned from your songs too. Okay guys, so what I want to do now is I want to make sure that all of these routes for the songs and just for the artist controller and everything the dashboard I want those to only show up for users who are signed in as an artist so to do that I'm gonna to go to the config routes.rb where all of our routes are defined in our app and I'm gonna to try to move these routes into the authenticated block for artists I just feel like that should work. So all we need to do is move the resources songs and then the resources dashboard. Make sure to leave the device for artists up here outside of this block because that's what's allowing us to sign in and sign up as an artist. Now if I reload, everything still works fine. But to test this theory, I would want to sign out. So I can just open up a new incognito window and head over to localhost 3000. So now I'm not signed in as an artist. I'm just a guest user, no account. If I try to go to like slash songs, we'll see that there's no route. So we just get an error. There's no path over there for us. So that's cool. So now I think I wanna start focusing on the user side of the app. Although I did think that I was gonna create the nav bar I was just thinking it might be nice to create a quick nav bar for the artist page, like all these pages, just to be able to navigate around them. And then we could go jump into the user section. Okay, so we got this artist dashboard right here. Now, I don't really like this centered styled. It just looks a little bit weird to me. So I'm going to go ahead and refactor this real quick. I think this is fine. Like this top div that's kind of centering things, but we almost need another div which will have a fixed width. Let's do max width 5XL. And then we'll do MX Auto to push it in the center. Although we shouldn't need MX Auto because we already have the flex call on the outside div. So let's just wrap these inner elements. Close off this div. And then see what this looks like. Okay, so that's what we get now. Which is kind of different. Maybe we can reduce the padding a little bit. And we're still going to definitely need space between the title and the links. Why don't we just do another div around the links? And we could do like a flex gap for margin top 8. 
so the gap is going to separate the links it's going to add space and then the margin top is going to push it away from the top title so now we get something like this welcome to your dashboard and maybe we can just say like welcome to the artist dashboard so that makes more sense and we could even put a cool color on that and add a font too if we wanted to really get into that welcome to the artist dashboard post the song view your songs and obviously this styling really needs a, a work like a improvement because it's pretty ugly and then also i think we could have another link here to edit your account so device does add like a settings page uh it has like the email and the password so you might not want to have that on your edit page you might want to like separate them to different pages like some big apps do but if we wanted to we could get to that route by going to the edit user or no it's not user it's artist artist registration path pretty sure like this I can just copy some of the styling from this link of course and let's make this green so if you want to edit your account we'll click here all right and then this is what the devise edit page looks like so it almost looks just like the sign up page that allows you to change the email password and then you can add custom options like custom attributes i guess custom fields on this edit page so for us we might want to change something like the artist name which we could call it like stage name we could allow them to set their stage name and then we would use that to render you know who the song is by because we'd get it from the artist stage name all right so i'm going to real quickly go over to the device registrations edit so that's the edit page and i'm going to quickly add in some padding just so we can push down this form a little bit all right and now on the edit page itself um no i don't know if we'd have to extend this i think we would yeah we'd have to add our custom field for sure on this page so to add a custom field the first thing you need to do is have uh the migration to store the data i mean the first thing we could actually do is update the form why don't we do that let's just add a new field on the page and then we'll go to the migration and then changing everywhere else so to add the new field I kind of I do want to just copy but at the same time let's just add a div class equals fields right. label I'm gonna call this stage underscore name and let's close the br and do f dot text field for stage name and we don't need any of these options like autofocus autocomplete see that's just working with like the html so it would show up your autocomplete options and like it would autofocus but this is going to be a little different so now when we reload we'll see we have undefined method stage name for an instance of artist. So actually we need to add the stage name to the artist model. That's what we're getting here. So let's go ahead and create that migration. So we can go into the console and then create the migration with rail migration. And I'm gonna call it add stage name to artist. And then stage name is just gonna be type string. So you can leave it default just make sure there's a little bit of space so it can pick up that this is the attribute we're adding. And then this is the name of the migration. Now when you press enter, it should generate this migration. There we go, just like that. And if we wanted to look at what this generated, we could cat the file real quick and it would show that it's adding a column to the artist table with the stage name just being a simple string. <clears throat> All right, so let's migrate the database now with the rails db migrate boom just like that we've now added a stage name column which means if we reload our form now we shouldn't get an error perfect so now we're able to just display the stage name right here 
and we should be able to fill this out. But one thing is since we're using the regular like device edit form, it will have some issues because it won't want to permit this attribute. So like, let's say that my stage name is Billy Eilish, right? We press update. You'll see nothing happens. It <laughs> just in the console, it says unpermitted parameter stage name. So it didn't want to let you update with that. So if we want to pass a custom parameter or custom attribute device edit, I'm just going to look it up because I've done it before. You just have to add something to the controller, which permits it. So right here, the configure permitted parameters. This is what I've had to do before. I'm just going to look this up. Devise configure permitted permitted parameters. Hopefully we can get a good example here. Usually I would just do a before action in the application controller. Yeah, I would literally just do this. I think that's probably the way. We can go in the application controller. Add in this block, which is a before action, but only if it's the device controller. And then inside of here, we have this method, which we're passing to device. For sign up, we're adding a key, stage underscore name. So that should allow us to update this attribute through device. So if we go back to the form now and set our stage name, press update. Oh, now we're getting. One error prohibited this artist from being saved. The current password can't be blank. That's what I was saying about uh, you might not want to have your password and like your email and all this stuff on the same page because for device, if we're just trying to update our stage name, it's still asking for a password, which I guess is not too bad. Let me just put in my password, but we might want to fix that. All right, so just like that, I've updated my stage name. Now I'm pretty sure we have an artist with stage name of Billie Eilish, so that's sick. Although in the console, it still says it's not permitted. What the heck? All right, let's check Rails console. I'm gonna go into our app in the Rails console with Rails C, and then check out artist.last. Oh no, it looks like their stage name is nil. So it didn't get saved. Even with my controller action and everything, we're trying to permit for sign up. But that's not sign up. That's like registration edit. Oh, so right here, account update. Oh, I didn't see there was two. So there's like different actions. So I guess account update is another one. Let's go back. Let's edit the account. Put in my stage name, my password. Update and let's see what happens now. Oh, it looks like it actually updated it now. It's pretty sick. So if we do artist.last, you'll see that our stage name is the correct name. Perfect. So now we have artist accounts, we have names. We're already a good way there to like working on our app. So I'm probably gonna switch over to the, the main section of the app where you listen to the music, right? There was a few more things I wanna do, like maybe I'll post some more songs just so we can have some stuff to listen to on the app. But we can always do this later. Like always just sign in with a new artist account. Let's go to my personal music collection. Whoops. We can pull out some of my old songs, I guess. I have like a whole folder of beats. I have a bunch of folders of beats. Uh, let's see what we can find. We can also just use some downloaded music. So this is music that's, you know, other people that I like. I don't even know why I still have this in my computer. But at this point, it would actually be cool to have like an album mode where we could just create a whole album too, which you have that on Spotify. So we might want to handle that. And then I could just drag multiple songs. So like for this, I have this Lil Zelly song. I'm just going to put it in. Um, this is a song that we made together. But the funny part is it's going to, it's actually going to show up as Billie Eilish. 
let's create the song. So just like that, we've created the song. We have the audio file, but we don't have any way to like play these yet. So that's what I'm gonna do on the art on the listener section. So the regular mode outside of the artist dashboard, we're going to actually have a way to listen to all these songs. Even though we only have two songs right now. But let me just go ahead and create like multiple songs. And also I might sign out and sign into different artist accounts, if I'm being honest. So let's go and first I'm just gonna need a sign out button. Because right now I have no way to sign out. So let's just put it right here on the on the freaking dashboard page. So link to sign out. And this is gonna go to destroy user session. Or not user, I keep saying user, but it's artist. That's the name of our account. Because I usually use user with device, but this time I'm finally using a different model name for the class. We can just do the same old class. I'm gonna do pink. And then make sure to have a data turbo method, which is what transforms your regular link into a link that makes a delete request. So we're able to sign out. So now when you click, boom, it makes a request to the controller. It signs us out just like that. And now we're able to sign up as a new artist. So like, let's see what else, what other music I have that I can post. All right, so this should be a good amount of beats that I can post uh, for my personal Spotify account, right? So what I wanted to do is on sign up, let's also have the stage name thing. So we can set our stage name right when we're signing up, which might be helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that device registrations edit page and I'll just copy this field and go over to the new and drop it in right underneath the email and then where you reload this is what our sign up page would look like so I can put my email indigo at whatever.com my stage name would be like prod indigo let me put in your password Boom, just like that, you have your whole account. If you go to view the songs, this is what's cool is that it's scoped to only your songs, so it doesn't show anybody else's songs, since we're getting it off that current artist. All right, and then for posting a song, uh, see, I really just want to be able to drag like all of my songs and post multiple. That's probably a feature that we're going to build. But for right now, we just drop the audio file, and let's find us an image. I think that's good enough for now. We have a bunch of different songs on this app. So from here, I wanna go and head over to the listener section. So we're gonna sign out as an artist, get back to this main page, and now we're gonna focus on building the listener section, which is gonna be really cool.